so much and he's one of the biggest exports of course from Ghana to the world. He's a Nungwa boy and that's the more reason I love him. Came promise with this one, Chop Life. Chop Life because Charlie problems, you know they finish. So this 2022, make sure say you go chop for life. Welcome back from the break, still showing on your screens. It's TV3, a new day. And I'm about to speak to a gentleman all the way in New Jersey. Yes, of course, in the United States of America. Now he belongs to a group of people I respect a lot. People who are in the arts industry. I've always said that I cannot even draw a straight line, just a straight line to even save my life. So to think that people are able to think artistically and actually produce inspiration of all sorts is one thing I never would be able to understand. But that's, what, that's who God is. He is just awesome and beautiful like that. Kwesi, Kwesi O Kwating, he'll be telling me what the O is, but Kwesi O Kwating is my guest this morning. Now, he's got a lot of credentials. I'll just go over a few. His works have actually been featured in Revision and Response, a group exhibition at the New York Mu Museum, and two pressing exhibition at the Calabar Gallery in New York City. He is the recipient of the Creative Catalyst Grant 2020-2021, and his works are held in private collections all around the world. Now, this is what Kwesi does he creates very resplendent textile artworks using a diversity of culturally significant fabrics from around the world including kente cloth from his native ghana raw silk and upcycled remnants which he dyes by hand stitches them and reimagines as a masterful tapestries that is what this gentleman does all that brothel is going to be explained by kwesi good morning it's, yeah, i think it's even too early for you what time is it here in ghana it's nine what time is it in new jersey it's it's 4 a.m my goodness <laughs> that that you you have you have to sell your craft so of course you have to wake up very early in the morning we are sorry we did this to you but are you happy to be here Oh yes, I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy to be here. I was actually in Ghana not too long ago. So ah, you day. came to Bamba and to chill with the big boys. <laughs> um, I was the big boy. Ah, <laughs> were you here in December? Oh yeah, I was. I just, I returned like uh, how many days ago? Just a few days ago. Are you like kidding? Like two, three days ago. I would have loved yeah. to have this interview with you in person. Why didn't you come here with all that you've got when you were here in Ghana? And I'm not doing yeah. this whilst you're all the way. <laughs> away in, in I, new jersey i think it was timing it was timing i'm right. not allowed to be in the studio too it's fine it's okay at least now you have everything all your collections behind you so you can take us through oh. it but your name suggests to me that you're full-blown Ghanaian. is that correct where are you from in ghana yeah um i'm, I'm a fountain asante so oh. the o as he asks is uh, odro is Christy odro kwating oh right i see Good to meet you. I've never seen you, but yeah, of course, through technology, I'm seeing you this morning. So let's talk about what you do. Artistry or being an artist, is this what you do full-time, 100%? Um, yes, I'm a, I'm a full-time artist. Um, yep, I've been, yeah, I'm a full-time artist. Okay, so I've spoken to a few artists in my lifetime, and they will tell you that it's innate. It's a blessing from God. It's a talent that they just knew they had right from when they were very, very young. Is yours the same story or you had to learn? Um, it's, it's virtually the same story. Mm. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers that when we were young, there was this TV program called At Attack. And I was always doing At Attack. I went mm. to school. Mm. I went to a day school. I did visual arts. So it's just... I've just been an artist. I, I mean, I've never seen it. I've never imagined a time where I wasn't an artist. So, yeah. So always and always. So when you were in Augusto, what was your story? Would you? It, it, it was a disco. Oh, a disco. sorry. I, I, I beg your pardon. I'm so sorry. I beg your pardon. Sorry, That's sorry. Okay. So a disco. So what was the story like when you were in a disco? The story in regards to uh, your art. Were artist. you still doing this when you were in school? Did you do visual no. arts? I, I did visual arts in the side of college, okay. but um, I wasn't practicing this way. I've, uh, prior to actually working with fabric, I've always been a, a painter. Even when I went to um, 
college or university here in the u.s mm. i was uh initially i started off as a painting so like what you regularly see mm. um mm. oil paints on canvas with a brush and everything mm. so mm. yeah that that is the kind of artist I, I was so i developed this process like uh back in 2012 so it's okay. been about 10 years now right so what you continued visual arts in school in the u.s as well yes yes I was oh. always going to do that. I wasn't going to do anything else. I see. So you have studied for this full time almost all your life. Yes, I've been an artist all my life. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm an artist. Okay. So take me through it. Typically, so I see some of your exhibitions on the screen right now. And I can tell, say, who use it in Toma and Amebua? Oh, Amy, you soon Toma. So, we, so what? Tuma, hold on. So I'm seeing on my screen that there's a red in Tuma mixed with white on a wall. I'm not sure if it's a country's flag. I don't know where that inspiration oh, that came from. Right but what is this one? Okay, so so I think in order to understand this piece, what I do is um, I take fabrics from different parts of the world. Okay. So as a Ghanaian living in the United States, when I first came. Um, I, I met people from different places, and um, my artwork was to describe. Mm. And as some person, I can't incorporate like Michia or more from different places around the world. Okay. I wanted to do that without having to paint images. Ah. And so, no, I started off painting abstract, which is without any image, but not, it was not telling the story as I wanted to. Okay. But I recognized that uh, in Ghana, mm. fabric means a lot. So what you wear, our fabrics have names. Mm. Our fabric, um, our fabric um, how do you call it, uh, uh, tells like information to people. So mm. when you wear white, you know you're celebrating. When you wear black, you know you're mourning and all that. So then I started developing that research into different countries. And mm. you realize that different countries also have signif signif signifiers with like um, their fabrics. So I combine them to make abstract pieces, and that is what you're seeing here. Um, okay. Like the uh, yeah, in here I have about let's say 13 different fabrics from different yeah. countries in here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, Kwesi, you're going to do us a favor this morning because you're very far away, and we want to get up close with you. You may want to pick up your camera, get closer to some of the pieces hanging on your walls, so we can tell exactly what they look like and what amount of work actually goes into it. Okay, let me let me just turn. So this piece is, uh, mm. I mean, it's already been bought. It's going into a private collection. But this particular piece, uh, to describe it, so you see the blue part. Yes. It's hand dyed. It's canvas. It's hand dyed. So I dye it like mm. when you go to a tonsu, like mm -hmm. how they dye. Um, it's called a tap dye. Mm. If you go to different cultures, like in Mexico, in Morocco, in the Indians, they also dye the canvases. So I hand dye these canvases. When, when you say hand here, dyed, what do you mean? When you say I, hand I mean dyed, it's not, it's, hand dyed means it's not factory dyed. So I didn't go to a commercial place to okay, do it. I okay. I did it myself. Right, right. Yes, with, with my own hands. Okay. And then, um, so, and then in here we have uh, fabrics from like, uh, that is uh, Maasai Shuka, that is um, the other red one. This so one that's the red part Ethiopia. I see. Yeah, the red yes, part. Yes, that's a Maasai Shuka and that's Ethiopian. This is kente cloth from Ghana. Oh. That is Ankara cloth. Um, this is another kente cloth. This is a mat cloth from Kenya. Mm. This is a Botswanian cloth. This is um, this is Malian, and then this is uh, from Rwanda. So wow. yes. Wow. So I take it that every country you go, you make sure that you collect pieces of cloth from every country. I I don't go to these countries. Oh, you don't. But um, every country. I interact with them. So being in New York, uh, or I'm in Jersey, but I go to New York a lot. And then around this metropolis, mm. you meet people from different walks of life. So people that I interact with constantly, I research into their fabrics. I have friends, sometimes their moms give me their fabric. Sometimes uh, when my friends travel, they buy me fabric from, mm. from the countries that they're coming from. I have another one here right now. No, no, but, but, wait, wait, but wait, 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 wait. Please go back to the other one. So what does this signify? Yes. Is this the okay. sea I see? What, what does that painting signify? Or this artwork signify? I see what you're saying. Okay, so, so this is a, is, an, is a work of multicultural identity, okay. right? So it's like, Unipa Bakwa, your friend is saying, Ikru Ahudro Nina Ayinimuma. So in order to articulate this, right. to articulate this, what mm -hmm. I do is I combine the fabrics together and 
in art, now there is something called something that makes visual sense. Okay. Visual sense. And so, we shall, we shall we need to a bit of it. And I say, a bit, a bit capture with interest. Okay. Right? Okay. So, I would have to, cap as an artist, now I would have to see which fabric do I put to what for it to make visual sense. Okay. Now, um, to go a bit into detail, no, mm. these things here, I have to say, no, right? Right. It's representing a map because I'm taking people from different cultures okay. into the maps. So, so you, when you look at the ends of the maps, mm. now, it's always never straight. Right. So that is what um, helps me in there. Okay. Now, I also borrow fabric making techniques into the waist and a, a hand stitching. Oh. Into me, me, me hand stitching, I'm being here to, 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 um, imply of a path okay. of people like say who took quite a queen to mono it's meandering brain, along yeah oh, exactly okay fantastic all right so before you go to your left let's come to the yellowish cloth that i see to your right where the chair is just by the artwork you just showed us exactly this one this exactly this one very interesting piece of of art what does it signify and when a layman looks at this what is it supposed to represent? So uh, all my works is supposed to represent multiculturalism. Okay. Into, you know, for instance, me, me a Ghana, you know, when right. I come here and I see this work, if you go closer here, you see Ghana here, right? Yeah. But this is actually Nigerian, and okay. this is also a Kente. So what it means, they say, if you come into this fabric now, I want different people to see themselves in it. Into the way say a Mexican, way say a Malian, way say a mm. Chinese. There's an Ecuadorian shuka. Into the nini na ana say artwork back pono. Ni probably brave because no me who say oh me me so me to me who me who a womb. And it's just basically talking about the kind of world we live in today. Me ba Ghana say see ana. I didn't only meet Ghanaians. I met people from like different parts of the world. Mm. And that is how the world is moving. Oh, into now that is what my work signifies. It signifies the constant interactions of people of many cultures. Kwesi, how are you able to artistically hang this on the wall for it to even look like this? Because if you sent this to me, I probably would not be able to hang it on my wall like this. What's the technique that goes into it? Do you glue it down? What do you do? So, so okay, um, that part, no, a part be a secret, and then they may keep it to the imagination of the viewers, right? Okay. But what I do is, they say, when I research into um, fabrics now, mm. I like, for instance, I borrow dye, you know. What I also borrow is different fabric making techniques. So, for instance, here, you know, you see some fringes here. Yeah. In art, you know, we call something that is like diversity and then uh, your friend is saying um, texture. Okay. Into you know, that texture aspect, you know, I borrow it. This particular one, you know, um, it's for, um, I borrowed how they make a ball gown in, in fashion industry. Oh. It's when they make a ball gown, it's not fully all cloth. There is a structure behind it. So this one, there is a structure behind it. Oh. And that is how come it's able to okay, fold okay, and okay, stay okay, permanently okay, okay. this way. Right. Now, n that explains it. Because I was trying to figure out how it was hanging on the wall as beautifully as you have put it. But I, somebody else would not be able to do it. So the way it's made, you can actually just lift it and then paste it yeah. on the wall. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to the third one you wanted to show us, and then we'll go into how much time it takes to produce um, all that you're showing us, and we'll talk about the money bit as well. <laughs> okay, um, so so this is also another another piece. Um, this is seventy, or uh, I deal in feet, so this is uh, the inches. So this is seventy inches by um, forty-eight inches. Okay, um, it's also similar story talking about multicultural identity. So in this one, there is a lot more fabrics here. So let's see. So this is um, this is Argentinian. Mm. Um, this is uh, Ugandan. This is Mexican. This is a uh, uh, an Indonesian batik. This is Botswanian. This is a uh, Wudin cloth. This is Malian. This is a mat cloth. This is Kente. This is a Maasai Shuka. That is um, uh, Ethiopian. Okay. And this is also another cloth from Ghana. Mm. And when you come here, you know, down here, there is a... So it's like... It's just different fabrics from different cultures. And as I said, earlier, you know, it has to make visual sense. In terms of when I start, all I do is uh, I start off, let's say, I know say it's going to be red, but why should yellow cloth go here? And why should a blue cloth go here? And mm -hmm. why should all these different cloths go into the middle? Ninjana is an artistic question that I would have to answer as okay. an artist. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I, that is basically it. Okay, so this very piece right here, the combination mm -hmm. of the red, the white, and then the pieces of different uh, fabrics or, te or textiles that you've used. 
how much time did it take to produce this? Um, I I can't. I will. I would estimate about a week, about a week to do this, but wow. not entirely a week because um, the dyeing process, you no, know, is also very different. And, you know, if you look here in my studio now, I have all these dyed canvases here, right. and these are fabrics from like different cultures here. Mm, and, you mm. know, the dyeing process, need the it, I do that um, significantly, and that I take about a month to dye all my canvases. Then after a I month. dye them, then I it takes a month yeah, to I, dye all your canvases. Yes. Why that long? Does it take to um, does it take a long time to dry up, or it's the mixture of the different colors? No, because I'm dyeing different colors. Uh, it's just different colors. Internet, like a particular color. Let's say if I'm doing red. It should take me at least three days to do a significant amount of red mm. that would last me for at least let's say depending on what i have coming up like if i have a shoe coming up mm. if i have collectors who are inquiring it i i would do something that would last me at least three months mm. to mm. um mm. to to make so the dying process is different and then when it comes to how do you call it when it comes to making the work itself no and then not I say about a week because that is an average because sometimes you know, in arts and there's something known as artist block that okay. is a uh, a, B, I was that B, B, but you just you blank don't, out like, the work. Yes, yes, the work is not working. So uh, <laughs> I, I always say, say art, no, you, you like you talk to the artwork. So you're having a conversation with the artwork. Sometimes, so, oh, yeah, and I say, and yeah, yeah, the artwork is going to tell you, say, this is not working. So you step away or wow. you do something else. You go read, you go do research. So you can actually like have a communication with the artwork. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and it talks like back to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, you have to hear the artworks. You know what's very interesting? This is one of the very first pieces I made. Uh, this was this is from 10 years ago. Okay. And then this is like my most recent one. So, once well, I mean, yeah, first, I got a lot of Kinte cloth right. from Ghana in 2012, mm. and that was always all Kinte cloth. And now it has progressed into, into this one. I see. But yeah, the artwork speaks the difference, it does speak to The you. difference 10 years can make, eh? I know. Ah. This must be very, very spiritual. And considering the amount of time it takes you to be able to complete one piece of artwork, it tells me that you must have a lot of money. How much <coughs> do these go for? Because you've already hinted that these pieces of artworks are not even all over the place. They are in private collections. And I have a fair idea when they say this one is in a private collection. I've been around a little bit, so I know. How much are we talking <laughs> well, about? Um, well, um, my works, it, honestly, um, it depends. It depends on um, uh, the size of the works. So what goes into pricing? Like, what goes into pricing the, the, the piece of artwork? Is it the time that went into it, the inspiration, the frustration, another day? Hmm. You know, it's a very... So my first piece was not... I didn't price it myself. It was priced by an appraiser. So the appraiser is not kind of determine like, first of all, the uniqueness of the work and then also the demand and also they also factor in the cost of production and also the time. And, you know, um, that is uh, that is what goes into it. But okay. right now, no, where I am as an artist, now, most of the um, the gallerists and then the uh, the dealers no, uh, determine the price for me. And, you know, we have like a negotiated um, amount of how it, it goes for right. so that I don't uh, price myself. And then, yeah. So so pricing doesn't depend on just you. Gallerists and um, all no. that. Okay. Yes, All those yes, people it coming. It only on me. Okay, yes, so yes. now that you've given me an idea of what goes into pricing, give me an estimate of the well, the the ten year piece that the ten year difference piece that you just showed me, the one with the red base. How much would something like that cost? Um, from directly from my studio, mm. um, it would be about five thousand. But if it were to go to a gallery or whatever, it could be. Uh, it could be eight thousand or ten thousand USD or Ghana CDs. Oh, USD. Ten thousand US dollars. I, I'm, I'm saying from my studio. Exactly, yeah, it, that's it, what I'm saying. For me. Wow. Yes, yes. But if you, you, go to you the gallery, must be it. very, very rich because I was going to oh. ask how lucrative this is. I imagine that when you were setting off or when you were starting this, did your parents even have a problem with it? 
Um, one thing is this. Um, my mom um, has actually been very, very supportive like throughout my entire art career. Um, she was never the mother that um, didn't want any of I look back and none of my siblings did something that they didn't like. Um, I think uh, I had family who, out of concern, almost say, I'm a lawyer. And I always say, I'm a doctor. And I'm a doctor. You know, and right. that is like you're searching of like getting something out of it. But, you know, sometimes um, when you're passionate about something, mm. it, like you, you just have a tunnel vision. And I had a tunnel vision about making art. And by God's grace, you know, it has brought me um, this far. But my mom has always constantly been supportive. I remember being young, Upia, Oba, not what thought, you know, color pencils and right. crayons for me and stuff right. like that. So, yeah, it's it been very supportive. At she, least on my she, part. Saw, she saw the talents very early. I asked her about how supportive they were because, I mean, for Ghanaian parents, did you grow up here, by the way? Did you grow up? Oh, yeah, I, I, grew up, okay. I grew up in Ghana. Yeah. So, for Ghanaian parents, normally, they will not see how lucrative this is, the money bits, because, of course, when you start, you don't start selling. And even if you start selling, it may not be the amounts that you're quoting right now. So, how did you let them believe in this dream that it could actually fetch some good amount of money like it's fetching right now? Um, so, I, I, me, mom, dear, I wouldn't say that I may. I let her believe in me. Mm. I think by 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 naturally, you know how my mom was. She has always been supportive because right. I know my sister wanted to wanted to be a caterer, and my mom supported her in that. Mm. My brother wanted to be an aeronautic engineer. My mom supported him in that. So she had always just been supportive of her kids. But I know what you're talking about because in Ghana, no, even um, when I was when I started off as an artist, mm. um, part of my mom's help was say. She took me to this one. Say when you want to be an artist, very young, they mm. it, they think that you're going to be make signboards, right? Mm. So she took me to calligraphy class with mm. this guy, um, and I had to learn how to do lettering so that mm. in future, no ABR may sign. But at that time, no crowd. I'm not um, graphic design and like you know, um, coral like Windows computer. We're in a crowd empire, mm. so mm. I couldn't even perceive. And my idea of being an artist, no, was not something I perceived in mm. this in this regard. I didn't even know what being an artist as a career would actually be because in Ghana, not, we didn't have that. We didn't have like the galleries, we didn't have the museums and we didn't have that structure. Right, so right. Um, I don't think she even had an idea how it's going to become. I am um, saying, you know, I got a hang of it, an idea of like how to make a career out of it and what it takes to make a career out of it. And that, that, yeah. I, I, I wish but now, had... Ghana is very different, mm, I would say, mm, though. Mm, Ghana mm. is absolutely very different. There's mm. a lot of people doing a lot of great things right. in Ghana, right. a lot of galleries, and there's very, very um, renowned, mm. good Ghanaian artists mm. out there on the global scene. Kwesi, please touch base with us yeah. the next time you are in Ghana. I would want to extensively continue this conversation, but to see idea, we've run out of time. So just make sure Yo. that you touch base with us anytime you're here, or you can also throw us an invitation. Let's come to New York, sit with you, visit you, on, or maybe oh yeah, we'll view it now, you know. You can actually invite us to come and then do a very nice coverage as well. Thank you so much for okay. your time. Happy New Year. Enjoy the rest of your year. We'll see you. Thank but you before, so much. before you go, there's one important question I wanted to ask you. You bringing people together through art. Exactly what have you been able to achieve with that? Um, so what I've been able to achieve is say, um, people come together now. Mm. Say like, um, okay, in one piece, right? Like mm -hmm. in a collector's home, mm. he's bought pieces from different different parts of the world, right? Okay. When he when he shows it to people, mm. he tells them, say, I have pieces from here, I have pieces from there. Right. But now look at this one piece. It's talking about all these pieces that mm. is coming together mm. in one. Mm. In Tenubia, I think say, even here in New York, we've gone through like Black Lives Matter and there's yeah. always like antagonism yeah. for like people from different places. My work just kind of says, say, okay, it just completes, it completes the story of unity. Exactly. Fantastic. Exactly. All right, Kwesi, thank you so much for speaking right, with us thank you. this morning. Enjoy the, please go back to bed. It's, too, it's way too early, so please go back to bed. So that's Kwesi Oteng. He's an artist all the way in the United States of America. He's Ghanaian, and he was just letting us into his world of artistry. This is still TV3 New Day. In no time, we'll be crossing over to the University of Ghana, where Bella had a conversation with students on campus regarding accommodation. We'll be right back.